Hi, I'm Past Commander Charlie Schuler, SN, of the North Strand Sailing Power Squadron, which is a unit of the America's Boating Club. We're in the middle of COVID-19, and we are teaching this course electronically. This is a YouTube, which will show the animated knots which is a portion of the Boat Handling Seminar 4, Knots and Line Handling. This was developed by the America's Boating Club and is copyrighted 2019 by the United States Power Squadron. If you are interested in taking this or any other boating course, please contact your local squadron by going to americasboatingclub.org. Let's get this show on the road. Two half hitches, and it shows round a pole and inserting a working end through the loop. Now we're going to have it animated, so just hang in there. And you finish it up with two half hitches so that it doesn't come undone. Here we go. Around the pole with a half pitch and a half pitch. Got that? Around the pole, cross it, make a loop, then make two half pitches, hit it. Now we're going to talk a little bit about some knots used to secure your boat. The cleat hitch, clove hitch, round turn, and two half hitches, and the anchor bend. There's a nice example of the cleat hitch. You especially want to notice that the two lines under the one going across are parallel to each other. This is a wonderful knot because all you have to do is make one loop around the horn of the cleat hitch and you can control a boat of almost any size. <clears throat> Take three quarter turn under the horn away from the load. Notice that. Around the other horn, cross it, then underneath, and then here's the significant part. You kind of do a reverse loop in order to make that second line go parallel to the other line underneath the one that crosses the cleat. Perfect knot. These two lines have to be parallel. Otherwise, you're not doing a job properly. A properly tied knot will not come undone and is easy to undo when you want to. Cleat hitch, example, around both horns, underneath, cross, and then underneath the line that you used to cross. Clove hitch, normally used around a pole. You form a loop around the post, lead free, make your turn, come underneath it, and now where you have the two lines crossing, you insert your line through that, and it looks like that. You put two half inches in it so that the line does not come undone if it's pulsated and pulled against, it keeps it secure. <clears throat> Here we go. Around the pole, then cross the line, and then through the little loop that is made there, and pull that secure. You put two half inches in it to finish it up. Here's a round turn with two half inches. We talked about this in an earlier lesson when we, uh, 
it looks very much like an egg anchor bed, but it's not. It's just two round, a round turn with two half hitches on it. And there's your second half hitch. Around, around, through and through. There's your two half hitches. We made the anchor bend in an earlier lesson and here is the chance to uh, see it again. Uh, I'd like to point out that you notice on the shackle there, they have that shackle wired so that it can't come undone by friction. So you take a round turn around the anchor ring or the shackle. Here we go. Then up and through. But notice that you're going to be going through the two loops there made by the shackle itself. There we go. Look for that. <clears throat> there we are. Through the loop. Great knot because the harder you pull, the tighter it holds itself. So it's not going to come out by accident. And you notice the two half pitches are there to finish off any loose ends. <clears throat> Knots used for rescue or repair. This would be the bowline, the sheet bend, and the rolling hitch. That's what the bowline looks like. It's it's not a it's not a uh, hang, hang hangman's noose. It's it's a bowline that you can put around your waist and under your shoulders, and it doesn't slip. So if they lift you up with a winch of some kind, um, you, they can pull you out of the water, <clears throat> fully closed and wet and whatever, and that line's not going to slip. It'll get you in. You start by forming the overhand loop, you make a little loop there, then you take your working end and go through the loop, around the standing part, and back down through the loop, the same as you came out, the same direction. And then you hold it like that and pull it tight. You notice that you loop, leave your loop, your big loop, much larger than you do the working loop that you're using for your knot. Here we go. See, that loop is much bigger. Turn around the working end, back through. Sheet bend. It's normally used for joining two different diameter lines together. Wonderful knot. It's not a square knot. If you look at that, you see the difference. <clears throat> so you form a bite. A bite is a loop in a line, the middle of the line, not the ends. That, that would be a loop. Use a smaller diameter line, come up through the loop made, the bite made, and back underneath the smaller line, and then you secure that. Here we go. Here's your bite. The smaller diameter line out, around, and under itself, and over the larger diameter line. Got it? A rolling hitch. <clears throat> A rolling hitch is a uh, wonderful knot for securing one line to the other in the middle of the line. It doesn't slide down the line. And that's the idea of it. So you make a round turn, back through itself. Then you add a second wrap and through. And then one more on the outside. So you actually have one above and two below. 
And that's what gives you your friction. That, that may seem kind of busy. So take a look at it. In fact, let's try that one again. Here we go. Good. <clears throat> Knots used with running rigging. Um, running rigging is all the working lines on a sailboat. You're going to use a figure eight knot, the square knot, also called a reef knot. Here's your figure eight. <clears throat> the figure eight has saved me many times <clears throat> when you lose control of a line and it goes flying around on a boat and uh, if you have a, if it's run through a pulley or a block of some kind, the figure eight will actually stop the knot from sliding through and losing all control over it. Notice how it looks like the number eight, and that's what you're doing here. So it's not just like an overhand knot you put at the end of something. This is a figure eight, which makes a larger end to the line so it doesn't pass through. Over, around, and back through. And there you are. There's your figure eight before you snug it up. The square knot, normally used when you join two lengths of line of the same diameter together. Right over left, and then left over right. So, they make a note here, that you should notice that the free end of each line is on the same side as the standing part. So it's like joining two bites together. They're using separate colors here just to help you understand that. It's right over left, left over right, and then they secure it down. And there's your two bites. You can tie a lighter rope to the heavier rope using a sheep bend. A good one for pulling somebody out of the water would be a bowline. And there's a block and putting a figure eight at the end of one of the lines, or, the, or all your lines, and it would prevent them from sliding through the block. Thank you. Now take the full course.